This video will introduce you to Nano3's TEM laboratory and also give you a primer on what to expect during your first training session. The operator space contains the workstation which is used to control the microscope and also a plasma cleaner. Inside the microscope room there is a sample preparation desk. Finally, there is an analysis computer with advanced TEM software in the microscopy lab. When you first arrive at the system, you must check the vacuum panel. In particular, check that the column vacuum is less than 15 log. Also, ensure that the nitrogen level is greater than 30%. The column valve should also be closed. The first thing that you will learn is how to prepare the TEM grid into the single tilt holder. There are various holders available, but the single tilt is one that you'll use very often. Clamp is very delicate and has a specialized tool to open and close it. Be sure not to damage or lose this tool. The images in the lower portion of this figure show a correctly loaded TEM grid under the microscope. Once the sample is in the clamp, you want to rotate the holder tapping very gently to ensure that the TEM grid is secure. The last thing that we want is for your sample to fall into the column. Prior to inserting the holder into the column, we need to reset the stage coordinates. This can be done on the TEM software or by the touchscreen on the TEM. The column valve should also be closed. You are now ready to insert the holder. There is a metal notch on the holder. Hold this notch at the three o'clock position and insert the holder most of the way. Finalize the position by turning clockwise to the five o'clock position. Once in this configuration, a light will indicate that the system is pumping. On the touch screen, you must select the holder type, in this instance, single tilt holder, it will then take a couple of minutes to pump. During this step, vacuum will pull on the holder, so hold it securely. Turn the holder anti-clockwise slowly to align the notch with the slot in the system and slowly let the holder into the chamber. Give the holder a few short taps to ensure it is fully inserted. You're now ready to operate the system the rest of this video will detail some of the basic alignments that you will be expected to perform. Once the column shows a pressure of less than 15 log, you may open the column valve to irradiate your sample with the beam. By simultaneously using the magnification and intensity dials, demagnify to get a zoomed out image of your sample. In this instance, we'll be looking for a FIB prepared TEM lamella. The lamella is in the lower left of the screen. You can use the joystick to adjust the stage position. Again, by adjusting the intensity and magnification dial simultaneously, you can zoom in on your sample area of interest. It is normal for the image to flip at certain magnifications. Also, be patient while the system acquires the image. So here we're seeing in real time how long it sometimes takes for the phosphor screen and camera to adjust. The next step is to set the eucentric height. There are a number of ways to set the eucentric height but one of the quickest and simplest ways is to adjust the stage Z whilst monitoring the contrast of your sample area of interest. Adjust the stage Z using the buttons on the control pad and use the joystick to keep the sample near the center of the screen. The sample will be roughly at the eucentric height whenever there is minimal contrast between the sample and the vacuum background. In other words, the sample will look very pale and transparent, as shown here. Ideally, the next alignments are performed in vacuum. 
You may not be able to find a vacuum region easily on your sample, but in the case of a lamella, we can just move away from the lamella portion of the sample because empty space surrounds it. The first alignment requires a spot. Reduce the intensity using the intensity dial on the hand panel to form a spot. Many of the alignments are accessed from the bottom right of the screen. The first alignment will be direct alignments, beam shift. The goal of this alignment is to move the spot into the center of the screen as indicated by the circle fiducial. For almost all alignments, you must use the multifunction X and multifunction Y dials. Take care not to accidentally move the stage with the joystick or otherwise. When complete, click Done. The next alignment requires a larger spot, so increase the size of the spot with the intensity dial to be almost the size of the outer circle. Select apertures from the bottom right. We will be adjusting the alignment of the C2 condenser lens aperture. Never adjust the C1 aperture. The goal is to align the spot on the screen with the outer circle using the multifunction X and multifunction Y dials as before. Next, we want to double check the beam shift. Go to direct alignments, beam shift again, and with a very small spot, use the multifunction X and multifunction Y dials to center the spot. Next, go to direct alignments, and we want to do the beam tilt PPX alignment. Whenever you turn this on, the spot will look like it wobbles on the screen. You then use the multifunction X and multifunction Y dials to minimize the wobble. We then repeat this procedure for beam tilt PPY. It's good practice to continually touch up alignments as you proceed. So again, we're going to go back and we're going to adjust the beam shift direct alignment. The next set of alignments can be performed on the sample. So we're going to navigate using the joystick onto an amorphous area of our TEM lamella. At this stage, we should increase the magnification again by adjusting the magnification and intensity to dial simultaneously. And should the electron beam need subtly adjusted, you can use the trackball to move it. Take care not to do this too often though, because we don't want to upset the underlying alignments. Next alignment is direct alignments rotation center. This will modulate the beam. The goal is to use the MFX and MFY dials to minimize the image motion. The example showing on the screen is good alignment. Continue magnifying. The final alignment is the objective stigmator found under Direct Alignment, Stigmator. Click Objective. You can copy the current alignment position, X and Y coordinates, into location 2 or 3 for your record so that you can easily return to them later. The goal is to use the multifunction X and multifunction Y dials to make the Fourier transform of the image as symmetric as possible. It's a little tricky to tell, as you can see here on the phosphor screen, so you can get a better quality for your transform if you use the CETA camera. Before you lift the phosphor screen and use the CETA camera, please check the camera settings on the top left. In particular, we don't want to burn out the camera, so we must set the integration time to something reasonable. And if the camera is already inserted, we can click search to bring up the image on the TIA software. The Fourier transform that can be processed on the CETA camera is a lot cleaner. It's a lot easier to see if it's symmetrical. So you adjust the multifunction X, multifunction Y dials until it looks like on the screen here. These are all of the basic alignments and now you can go ahead and capture some data. There are a whole variety of file formats that you will learn about during training. Uh, many of the TEM file formats are proprietary to TEM software. Do remember that you need to save your data on the Z drive, not the local computer, because the files are very large. 
You can export uh, formats such as JPEG if you wish, but also remember there is a TEM analysis computer in the microscopy lab loaded with advanced software that allows you to open the proprietary formats.